Welcome to the Greater Irvine Chamber Business Insights podcast series, where we address challenges and ideas for early stage and entrepreneurial business leaders. Your host today is Dave Kofaro, Interim President and CEO of the Greater Irvine Chamber. Well, welcome folks to the Greater Irvine Chamber of Commerce podcast series. And every business founder, every owner, every manager comes into their role with unique experiences, different aspirations, different expectations. But the journey of a business owner comes with a lot of questions and challenges and dilemmas along the way. Um, My experience is I don't always know where to turn to for objective insights and guidance. I talk to friends, I talk to others, but it's great to have somebody else who can help with that. One approach that I found to be really impactful is working with a business mentor. So our guest today on our podcast is Amin Khalifa. Amin is the Orange County Chairman of SCORE, and SCORE is a terrific nonprofit volunteer organization that provides free, underscore, free expert mentoring resources and education to small businesses across the country, but also right here in Orange County. So, I mean, thanks so much for joining us today. We're we're really honored to have you with us. It's my pleasure to be here. All right. So, for starters, what exactly is a business mentor? You know, uh, Dave, it's complicated, but I mean, essentially, it's someone who can help another individual, in this case, another business person, navigate the issues they have in their business. It could be everything from a startup business to um, a business that's just encountering a particular problem, whether it be in marketing or a new idea comes up and they want to test it out. So uh, business mentoring, it can be pretty, um, can be pretty complex at times, but I, I characterize it as being the wingman you know, uh, of the business owner, somebody he can talk to at any point in time and sort out an issue. And and I think there's such value in having that wingman, that person who's not you, <laughs> somebody who's objective so that you can hear other honest, candid perspectives. So how do you generally approach working with a business? What's, do you have a standard way that you engage? Well, I usually... Um, when I mentor for a business for the first time, I, I will tell them that, you know, I'm in this for the long term, that this is not a, I'm going to answer a couple of questions and, and get out of here. I'm, I'm here with you. And, um, and then we start talking about what issue is being confronted. If it's a new idea, we, you know, we have to test that new idea. But, but oftentimes, one of the first things we do is write a business plan. And I'm talking about, uh, I prefer something called the business model canvas, which is quite short. It's all on one page. We're not writing tomes here, but we're getting to all the essentials of the business. What makes the business unique? Who are, who is the customer base? Who is the competition? Things like that. Th- those things are, are foundational. But, you know, with as much as things change for a business, I mean, as I think about it, customers are always changing. Business models need to evolve in advance. It probably never hurts to just revisit it, even if you've done it. Do you, do you, even if somebody's got an, a developed business plan, do you still go through that canvas process with them? Absolutely. Because, uh, like you say, things change all the time. Uh, you know, one interesting thing um, that we do it was we look at the customer and we try to develop what's called a persona, which is a, a single person that represents a whole number of customers. And oftentimes we'll find that there's more than one type of customer. Uh, for example, I've got a customer right now that is a gluten-free baker. And so we know that there are people with celiac disease that desperately need that. They tend to be older, more female oriented, but there could be another group, a younger group that thinks it's a healthy thing to eat gluten-free. So you've got to target two different audiences. And and in business that's been in existence for a while, that could very well happen that another group, another customer group is 
popped up that you haven't even noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great way to sort of engage in that conversation. Who's your customer? What do they value? So, I mean, what are some of the most common reasons that business owners work with you or work with SCORE? Well, uh, I, I have two sets of customers. One are, are new businesses where you have to really test the idea and really build up a business plan from the ground up. It's, it's, it's uh, oftentimes barely past the idea stage. It's been thought out a bit, but so that's one set. The second is the more mature business, and maybe they've hit a wall, or maybe they're thinking about coming, you know, where their business is flattened after many years of growth, or maybe um, they've got a new product, which is sort of different than what they've done before, and how, how does it integrate into the business? So um, I say I've got these two sets of businesses with different types of issues. Is there any rule of thumb that you use to know how long a business plan lasts? I mean, you're talking about a startup, an early stage company, and so certainly they need one. A mature business, the owner might say, well, I have a business plan, but is there a point where it becomes stale or less meaningful? Well, <laughs> I think you mentioned that the world changes daily. So, um, it, you know, it never hurts. Well, certainly a mature business, really does have to relook at their business plan because by now they've been, you know, working with a plan for a long time and definitely some things have changed and they've got to reconsider. I mean, those changes can be in a marketplace. It can be even just how they market because, you know, the social media is evolving and changing all the time. Um, with new businesses, you really, you know, one of the, one of the things I need to do is help businesses that are about to make a big mistake. They're about to put in a lot of money um, and before they've really tried out and tested the idea. Um, uh, for example, there's someone who was going to make fresh uh, dog food. And, uh, and uh, so here we really had to test, you know, instead of starting a, a facility and et cetera, et cetera, is why not make some at home and take it to some markets? dog oriented, a farmer's market or whatever, test out the premise and just see, you know, what your customers are. Are you actually going to be able to sell at the price point? So sometimes it's, let's take the small step before we commit a lot of capital. Yeah. Uh, very wise. <laughs> and so, so as you're talking through that, I mean, uh, the a question on my mind is, does your work tend to be more event specific so i need to know how to do some specific thing maybe expand to a second location or get a loan or something that's more of an event thing or is it kind of ongoing coaching and consulting in nature well i i find that uh it ends up being ongoing coaching even if it is an event based i mean i i've had people who just want to and have a question answered of, should I be a, a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a, a C-Corp, right? Um, but I engage them and say, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that's all fine. I can give you that answer or at least give you the pluses and minuses, you know, to them. But let, let's talk a little bit more about the business. And lo and behold, there's a whole other set of issues that we need to talk about. And, and so, um, so even the event-driven ones, tend to be more than that. Um, for example, I'm, I'm helping someone who's trying to make an acquisition, getting into a whole new business. And, you know, he thinks that after this is over, I suspect he thinks that the relationship ends. But now he owns a business, and he's going to need my help just as much afterwards <laughs> as before. Yeah. So, so you've covered a lot of different kinds of scenarios. The dog food company somebody who's looking at expansion, uh, those kinds of things. How do you approach it when a need comes up with a client that you're working with that might be outside of your area of expertise? Yeah, well, there's a number of us at SCORE that are more generalists. I, I've been in 10 different industries, uh, very distinct industries over uh, my career. So I, I can handle a lot of the general issues. However, um, you know, 
when someone needs a specific, uh, you know, help in a specific area that's very um, specialized. For example, I was talking to you about this baker who has gluten-free bakery. Well, he was baking at home, but now he's expanded enough. His business has really grown and he needs to find a piece of real estate. And there he needed some help from somebody that knows commercial real estate. And in, so I referred him to another score mentor whose whole life has been spent in commercial real estate to help him on that. So, um, and in that same uh, person at one point was worried about pricing and how to, uh, and how to position in the market. And I brought in one of our great marketing experts for that. So I'm sort of the hub and I pulled in other uh, people to help out in areas where my knowledge is uh, not as complete as theirs. So in a sense, you actually act like a team across SCORE, tapping into those folks with specific expertise like the real estate, if that's what your client needs. That's right. And sometimes we do what's called co-mentoring, where we're both on the line together uh, with our client. And sometimes, you know, I'll just send him uh, my client directly doing a one-on-one -on -one with, with the other individual. We all keep in communications with each other. We also write notes after every session. So we can always, so if I bring in someone, they can look at my last notes and understand where the situation is with that client right now. I can imagine that's really helpful to your clients because you're the point of contact, but then you can bring in somebody who's the subject matter expert if it's outside of your domain. That's wonderful. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, those, those notes are also very helpful to myself because, uh, you know, sometimes keeping track of, of a client, especially if they don't see you for a while, it's nice to re refer back to the last set of notes to sure. where you were. Yeah, yeah. You're kind of like the doctor, the doctor for the business, or, and the doctor goes back and checks her charts, and so uh, that helps. So, yes. so I want to go back, I mean, to something that we talked about, which is this notion that the, the business world's in perpetual motion, right? Customers are always changing in terms of expectations, what they need. Um, competition is always evolving. Technology is always evolving. Do you ever work with businesses that are doing well, but they didn't really adapt to a changing operating environment? And if that's the case, how do you tackle something like that? Yes, um, I, I've uh, worked with a business uh, recently that's been uh, you know, very successful for almost 30 years. And in that one is going to be a tough one because they're, they really are in bad shape right now. Um, cash flow wise, they've been borrowing, they've been borrowing from some unsavory sources. And, um, you know, and that one, frankly, I think they've come in too late. You know, there is such a thing of, of waiting till the very last moment, you know, and, and I, you know, they're going to face bankruptcy, but, um, but others, yes. I mean, um, there are businesses that are sort of have a great idea, got going, but gee, I don't have enough uh, capital to get where I need to get. And, and in those cases, um, you know, just helping them with raising funds in some cases, or, or maybe finding an alternative, uh, way to get through a capital crunch, you know, that, so sometimes it's, you know, my background is first of all, was finance. So I can sometimes go right back to that finance background, but, but I'll tell you, I, you know, I probably deal more on the marketing side and on positioning product side than I do on the financial side. Yeah. yeah well, you got to sell something to be able to have customers and do the financial work. Right. So, if you don't market and, and have a sales process, finance really doesn't matter a whole lot. So I can see there being a lot of need for that. But, but you know, it, I, I do think that there's a lot to be said for asking for help when you need it, when you see that things are changing. So I know that for a lot of us, it can be really hard to ask for help, right? It's just, it's not in our wheelhouse to go out and ask for a hand. What would you say to the business owners that can benefit from a mentor but they may feel uncomfortable, embarrassed, or just out of their comfort zone in talking to a mentor. Well, you know, maybe what my clients have said. Um, so I've taken on clients that 
I'm the first mentor they've ever had. And, uh, you know, within a few weeks, they're, they're saying, all my friends are jealous of me because I tell them of all this free help I'm getting. And, and uh, you know, you become a friend. Um, we have a, a couple of mentors that have been working with a client for 10, 20 years. I mean, they go on vacation together. <laughs> They've gotten so close to each other. So um, it's lonely when you're uh, running a business and you're the top dog or the only person, you know, and uh, who do you turn to? I mean, this is this becomes your new friend, somebody you can bounce ideas off with no jeopardy. It's, it's confidential. Um, and, you know, you, you get somebody that can just be a help to you and and just, you know, have your back. One of the things that people don't understand about mentorship is, you know, we're there for you. And that also sometimes means, it means sometimes being emotionally there for you. You know, as I work with uh, clients, sometimes they've got a, suddenly have a relationship problem where, you know, in their private lives and, or they've hit the wall one too many times and they're discouraged and, uh, you know, in those points, I'm there to cheerlead them and get them through that tough spot, you know, and uh, and yes, you know, get them through to the other side where they, their business starts to thrive. I, I, I'm working with a uh, florist right now that, uh, you know, about a month and a half ago was really down in the mouth and um, was just very, very discouraged. But I, you know, I just reminded her that she, she's a tough person. And she had to just break through that wall. And six weeks later, her business is really picking up. And she is now sort of on cloud nine. You know, so, so, so I would tell someone that don't look at it as just a business consultant. This is a person that's going to be in your court, helping you out. And you might even become friends at the end of this. We can all use more friends, but I, I think it's it's really important to kind of underscore this, that, you know, don't hesitate to ask for for a hand. Um, it, it can be lonely when you're running a business and you just don't have someone that you can talk to or, you know, get into the specifics. That, I think it's really important to sort of recognize working with you, working with SCORE, it's a safe place. You're going to get objective observations. You're going to be able to share ideas. And you're going to be able to come out of it in a better place because you've had that objective assessment. One of the things that I think is is so helpful with a mentor, with a coach, is often when we go through something in business, we feel like, oh my gosh, I'm the only person who's ever had to deal with this ever. And yet, in your role, I mean, I'm sure things that I might think are extraordinary. You're saying, yeah, it's just Tuesday. <laughs> I've been through this before, right? So so there's tremendous value in that economies of experience, that knowledge and being able to, to hear perspectives. So I encourage all of our listeners, if you, if you even have a question about it, reach out to SCORE, talk to a mentor, get some thoughts and, and see if it fits. So with that, I mean, we're as we're coming kind of to the end of our conversation today, um, this is the hardest question I have for you, but what's the one thought, and you got to narrow it down to just the one thought that you'd like to leave our listeners with relative to business mentoring? I, I think that uh, businesses um, and heads of businesses, can be, it can be a very lonely spot, and a mentor can be a no-risk way to bounce ideas off of you know if you, if you have staff sometimes an idea is going to put you in some relationship jeopardy with them but if you you know but when you talk to a mentor you know that person could be your wingman no risk get some a different objective perspective you know and um, so i'd say that's the number one reason to use a mentor I could come up with three through 10, but. (laughs) (laughs) Well, one will do, and that's a terrific piece of advice. So, um, you know, the the thing I'll say in closing is let's not fool ourselves. 
the world's changed a lot since COVID and business models have changed. The way we think about our, our customers, our clients, the way we have to, we get to work with employees remotely that we didn't used to have to, things are different. So folks don't hesitate to, to look to a resource like a business mentor to help navigate a continually changing environment. So Amin, I want to thank you so much on behalf of the Greater Irvine Chamber and really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I, I just want to add one uh, last thing, and that is um, with this rapidly changing world, one of the things we do at SCORE is we have a monthly meeting where we keep up with things like social media. You know, we've been working on AI for now for 18 months. You know, we, we do try to keep up because we know the world is changing. And so we need to keep up too as mentors. That's, uh, it's true. You all need to, um, if folks want to get in touch with SCORE, what's the best way to do it? I mean, well, there's lots of different ways, but, uh, you know, if you go to score.org and if you're living in Orange County, you might as well click on the left top corner on Orange County. And uh, so you can just go there and find your own mentor. You can self-serve. Uh, you can look at the skill set you're looking for. Um, otherwise, you can just leave an email and we'll help find you that mentor at the score.org. You make it very easy. <laughs> All right. Amin Khalifa, thank you so much. Appreciate you being a guest on our podcast today. Dave, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, folks, for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining us for the Greater Irvine Chamber Business Insights Podcast. To stay informed about upcoming podcasts and other important business news, please subscribe to our channel or check the Greater Irvine Chamber website.